Want to know the best specs for Solo Shuffle and Dragonflight? You've come to the right place. We've been working alongside Clyde, widely regarded as one of the best healers in the game, and one of the winners of the EU Solo Shuffle Tournament. Recently, he was one of the highest rated Solo Shuffle healers on pre-patch, and one of the few evokers to reach 2400 on beta. Well, almost. <clears throat> anyway, we trust Clyde. With his expertise and with collaboration from other Rank 1 Solo Shufflers, we will bring you our first Solo Shuffle tier list, so stay tuned as we predict the meta for Dragonflight Season 1. But regardless of what you choose to take in Solo Shuffle, we make even the most difficult specs and classes easy to master at the best place to learn PvP, Skillcapped. If you want instant access to the best and most reliable info and strategies out there, talk to you in a way that will quickly have you climbing the ranks stupidly fast, then sign up and make our website Skillcapped your homepage. We recommend enrolling onto our academy courses, which are available right now, teaching you the fundamentals to truly become insane at Arena. Then, when the new season starts, we'll roll out our class guides, where we've worked closely with the world's greatest players to create the very best guides for every class and spec, including Evoker, so you can dominate Arena and solo shuffle in the new experience. Expansion. There's no better place to kick your expansion off in Dragonflight than Skillcat. Special discount link is in the description below. First up, we have our selection for the most dominant melee in the bracket. It's Demon Hunter. Look, if you've been playing pre-patch or beta, this really shouldn't come as a surprise. But for those of you who have been living under a rock, DH is easily one of the most versatile solo classes. Of course, their incredible sustained damage and unrivaled mobility helps carry their performance in the bracket, but one of their true strengths is actually their control. With the addition of Sigil of Misery, Demon Hunters have a reliable, instant cast, range CC chain for any healer when combined with Imprison. Alongside their high consistency damage, this means they can win games essentially by themselves, which is a huge advantage in solo shuffle. DH isn't alone though and is joined by Assassination Rogue. The common theme in the S tier is the ability to solo carry games, which is important for, well, a bracket designed around uncoordinated solo play. Even though Vendetta is gone, Deathmark is able to fill its void, especially when combined with the huge healing reduction provided by Shiv. And remember, dampening starts at 10% in the bracket and ramps up 25% per minute, which makes Shiv incredibly deadly. The only thing that could hold Assassination back is its general fragility, as unlike a Demon Hunter, it doesn't have as much passive bulk and relies more on efficient cooldown trading, which can get a bit tricky in the bracket. Despite this minor flaw, Asa is well poised to be one of the most toxic opponents of the new competitive format. And with our highest tier out of the way, let's blast through the A tier melee. We will start with Feral Druid, who could actually be S tier in the right hands. The main contribution this spec offers is its remarkable AoE damage. With Primal Wrath as an easily accessible talent, Feral is able to pump out multi-target pressure with ease, and with dampening ramping so quickly, this can put huge huge pressure on many healers. The only problem with Feral is its relative fragility in the bracket. While it certainly has some efficient self-healing, it is passively less durable than other melee, which sometimes means needing to kite away or camp bear form. Joining Feral in the highest part of the A tier is Fury Warrior. The introduction of Slaughterhouse in Shadowlands continues to define Fury in Dragonflight, and the 40% total healing reduction is absolutely brutal in deeper dampening games. Unfortunately though, Fury Warrior is a spec that truly dies by the sword, as its defensive kit relies heavily on self-healing, something which gets easily outpaced once dampening really starts ramping. A similar problem happens with DK, though their passive defensive toolkit is able to circumvent some issues. Both Frost and Unholy are highly competitive in the bracket thanks to some of their shared tech in the DK tree. With mechanics like Will of the Necropolis and Rune of Spell Warding, DKs have a fair amount of tankiness against a wide array of damage sources. And while their damage isn't lethal on its own, it is still highly competitive and perfectly suited for solo play. And speaking of having highly competitive damage, Survival Hunter definitely carries in that department. Despite the loss of Craven Stratagem, Survival Hunters as a whole are still shaping up to be quite strong in the bracket thanks primarily to their expansive damage and CC toolkit. One crucial piece of underrated tech is Mending Bandage, which acts as a soft counter to Assassination Rogues and Feral Druids, which will likely be pervasive in the bracket. Finally, rounding out our last A tier melee is Windwalker Monk. This is a bit of a tough call. On one hand, their explosive damage profile can easily swing matches without much coordination from their team, which as we mentioned is a huge advantage in the bracket. On the other hand, Hand, their passive fragility can mean that Windwalker monks are forced to kite and avoid damage, while also heavily relying on a competent healer to stay in the fight. In any case, we think Windwalker deserves a spot on the A tier solely because of its ability to solo carry on offense. With our high tiers sorted, let's move on to the mid and low tiers. This is where you will find Rhett Paladins, who aren't bad on their own, but have a tendency to get owned by poor lobbies. With other melee DPS offering healing reduction, Rhett is left a bit behind and relies more on gimmicky one-shots during wings to close out 
standout games. When you combine this with the fact that they tend to perform really bad against a lot of caster heavy lineups, Red Paladins might have a more difficult time succeeding in the randomly sorted format. The same can be said with Enhancement Shaman. Although their burst is quite strong, they can easily be held back by awkward lobbies. Not to mention, Enhance relies heavily on its healing toolkit as a primary source of utility, something which can easily be countered with high MS effects coupled with higher amounts of dampening. Again, Ret and Enhance aren't bad on their own, and they do offer some strong utility options outside of their heals, but overall they might struggle to fit into the random comp selection of the bracket. Finally, we have our remaining melee DPS who are left stranded alone in the C tier. First up, Arms Warriors. This may come as a bit of a surprise, so let's break it down. For one, Arms Lost ignore pain entirely, as it is now prot exclusive. To non-warriors, this might not seem like a big deal, but this spell alone represented a huge part of their survivability, and now that it's gone, arms might survive defensively in a solo bracket. And while Sharpened Blade can allow Arms Warriors to apply significant pressure, this 25 second cooldown is dwarfed by the auto-applying Slaughterhouse mechanic from its other spec. So, with a hit to their survivability, and with a weaker form of healing reduction, ARMS is not as competitive in the solo shuffle bracket. And finally, as the wildest of wild cards, we have both Sub and Outlaw Rogues, which suffer from similar problems. For Sub, its damage profile isn't really designed for solo play. It is still the quintessential setup-based melee, which makes it feel a bit awkward in a bracket where coordination is as rare as a shiny Pokemon. On the other hand, Outlaw doesn't really do enough damage to solo carry in games. While it did keep some of its bulkiness, it just doesn't seem that good at winning games by itself, which puts it far behind assassination for solo play. And with that, we have a complete picture of the solo shuffle tier list for melee DPS in Dragonflight Season 1. The high tiers include a selection of specs that can solo carry games by themselves, usually on the back of incredible sustained damage, diverse control, or unhealable burst. The mid tiers could be competitive in the right hands, but for the average player, might fall a bit short as they start climbing the ranks. But with our melee out of the way, let's take a look at our first S tier range DPS. Both Demo and Affliction Warlock take our first spots on this list, though Demo is probably a cut above the rest. As the only caster DPS with a healing reduction effect and multiple forms of lockdown, Demo is able to conveniently slot into any lobby, especially paired with its relatively high sustained damage profile. Demo is also the most passively tanky out of all three Warlock specs, due in part to Soul Link, giving a slight defensive edge over Affliction and Destro. With that said, don't sleep on Affliction Warlocks in ranked solo shuffle. While they might lack some of the nuanced control of demo, they easily make up for it in the damage department. And now with the addition of both soul swap and precognition, Affliction should have an easier time getting out of damage, even into oppressive melee lobbies. Finally, even though it might not seem like a big deal, having both Healthstone and Gateway on your team is massively advantageous in solo gameplay, adding two additional cooldowns to your lineup that don't really require precise coordination. The only other ranged DPS that can truly compete at the S tier is Shadow Priest. While their damage might not be uber high tier, the versatility of their toolkit certainly is. For one, the bread and butter stun silence combo is an effortless way to contribute to kills without needing to worry too much about DRs since silence effects are so rare to begin with. One key talent in the solo bracket is Void Volley, which makes its return from Shadowlands. This will auto-activate on Dark Ascension casts, causing the priest to shoot out AoE crystals that disorient nearby enemies while dealing meaningful damage. If there was one spell that represents the chaos of solo shuffle, this would be it. And with our S tier sorted, let's move on to our remaining high tier range DPS. This is where you will find Elemental Shaman, which might be one of the most slept on specs going into Dragonflight. Ellie comes equipped with some amazing and relatively effortless sustained damage, which is built around the endless stream of Maelstrom generation provided by Flame Shock. The only real downside to Ellie is that it can sometimes struggle into melee DPS, especially Assassination Rogues and Demon Hunters, who can simply train them to the ground. Next up, we have Devastation Evoker as a shockingly good pick for Solo Shuffle. While its limited range might take a while getting used to, the spec offers a few huge threats in solo play. The first being their one-shot combo. This involves using Tip the Scales with Fire breath to unleash instant AoE damage that hits hard. No really, it hits super hard, allowing them to literally end games by themselves. Similar to Ellie Shaman however, Devastation is very prone to getting trained, and once they run out of mobility it can be incredibly hard to escape melee DPS, especially since Evoker lacks passive damage mitigation. Rounding out the A tier, we have Arcane Mage. Yes, get your Mitch Jones memes ready, the Arcane Dream is alive and real. Arcane received a lot of quality of life improvements in Dragonflight, including picking up Ring of Fire, giving it a new damage option while managing Arcane School interrupts. Ask any Arcane Mage and they will tell you how nice this feels. 
But what feels even nicer is just how much damage Arcane is able to deal. Why cast Polymorph when you can use your Arcane missiles with clear casting procs to pump out damage like your dual wielding Needler in Halo 2? And if that wasn't enough, Barrage is still able to act as a literal execute ability, allowing Arcane Mages to close out matches on their own. And with our high tier range DPS out of the way, let's move on to the mid and low tiers. First up, we have both Marks and BM Hunter. Both of these specs have pretty decent damage output, but with different profiles. Unfortunately, they can't really carry the game in the same way that a Demo Warlock can. Something positive for all Hunter specs is the control offered by the General Tree, with Steel Trap being baseline and then having the option to pick between Binding and Scatter. This does mean Hunters have a bit more control in Arena overall, which can help navigate the chaos of the bracket. Next up, Destro Warlock. This is one spec we are keeping our eye on, but for the moment, it seems to be underperforming in Solo Shuffle, due in part to how difficult it can be to actually cast in the bracket. Fortunately, Destro has picked up Backlash once again, giving it some instant cast damage that could help it in the format. But without the healing reduction of Demo or the AoE pressure of Affliction, the single target-oriented Destruction Warlock is left slightly behind in the Solo bracket. On the trendy topic of Wizards, Frost Mage comes next. Honestly, Frost isn't terrible. It's actually quite good, but Arcane is just noticeably better. Again, just like Arcane, Frost gained a lot of quality of life improvements thanks to the Mage Tree. With that being said, the spec does feel like it's a jack of all trades, but master of none. While it can play AoE damaged focused builds, it might find more success in the bracket with burstier single target damage in the form of Glacial Spike. Finally, rounding out the B tier, we have Balanced Druids. This could be another spec we are sleeping on. For one, it seems to be finding consistency with AoE damage builds, which are certainly valuable in the bracket. And of course, the infamous Root Beam combo is another rather consistent form of CC in Solo Shuffle, which is nice given that nobody in your lobby ever seems to try and CC the healer. Unfortunately, damage and a 1 minute CC combo is really all that Balanced Druid has to offer in Solo Shuffle, and seems to be getting outclassed by other hybrids. Finally, because we don't want to leave anyone behind, let's cover the lowest tier with our remaining spec. It's Fire Mage this time around. And before you freak out, let's have a lesson in recent history. Remember that Solo Shuffle tournament a few months ago, the one with some of the best players of all time? Let's look at the results in EU. Okay, in last and second to last place, we have Raikou and Alec. Literally two BlizzCon champion Fire Mages in dead last. And on NA, we have three mages in the last five spots in the entire tournament. Not a good day for Fire Mages. Anyway, that was back in Shadowlands, where Fire was arguably the most dominant spec throughout the entire expansion. In Dragonflight, the spec is widely considered the worst option for mages. So yeah, we're pretty confident Fire will be in the C tier for Solo Shuffle. With that, we have our full range DPS tier list. A lot of tanky, slippery, or damage pumping specs occupy the high tiers. While the mid and low tiers include specs that seem a bit too specialized to climb the highest ranks of the solo ladder. And just to clarify, being on the B tier doesn't mean a spec is bad, it just means it has some more obvious weaknesses. Anyway, that brings us to healers, starting off once again with the S tier. Surprisingly, this first slot belongs to Evoker. That might seem impossible. How could a healer with a 30 yard range do anything in Arena, let alone solo shuffle? The answer is because they literally have some of the highest HPS, coupled with a wide array of defensive cooldowns, a ranged interrupt, and the ability to deal massive damage all in the hands of a single healer. The things Evoker might struggle with in constructed Arena, like being super vulnerable to CC or lacking a bit of tankiness and stuns, will likely not be an issue in solo shuffle, where the meta is way less coordinated. So yeah, don't sleep on evokers in Dragonflight Season 1. For the next two healers, we have to jump down an entire tier. Resto Druid takes our first slot. Of course, just like Shadowlands, Resto has the ability to just pump out heals, making it very efficient at dealing with different damage profiles. And while it did gain access to instant star surge for contributing in the damage department alongside its control, Resto still seems a bit lacking offensively, but can still get by with raw healing output. There's a similar story going on with Mistweaver monk. Its healing is great, it got new defensives, and it now is an interrupt. Seems like it would be perfect for solo shuffle. Well, while it can still pump out HPS, it remains a bit limited offensively, which isn't that much of an issue in the bracket at all, but still can feel a bit limiting. At this point, we have to go down another tier to our three mid-tier healers. Both Disc and Holy Priest take up the first two slots. While they certainly have a wide array of options for contributing offensively, they still lack a bit in other departments. Holy can still struggle with high AoE damage output at a certain point, and just outright lose while spam healing. On the flip side, Disc might seem to have an abundance of cooldowns, but something like Barrier is a bit more difficult to use without good communication. And finally, rounding out the B tier is Holy Paladin. At this point, Holy Pally just seems a bit outclassed. Once again, it is a victim to being a jack of all trades, but master of none. 
It has healing, it has defensives, it has damage, it has control, but all these things can be done better by every other healer. This doesn't mean it's outright bad, of course, and Holy Paladins can certainly do well, but might find it difficult to coordinate with random lobby players. Unfortunately, this means there's only one remaining healer in the C tier. That spot belongs to Resto Shaman. Unfortunately, the thing that Shaman is worst at as a healer is the actual healing part. Their output is noticeably lower than other healers, which is super punishing into the high levels of dampening and solo shuffle. While it certainly does offer a lot of damage and offensive support, Resto Shamans might struggle to find time to do these things while constantly needing to recover. And here we have our complete tier list for healers in Dragonflight Solo Shuffle. One common theme among all the high tier healers is that they can all pump out heals. Remember, a lot of the DPS specs we expect to excel in Arena include a lot of heavy hitters with consistently high parses, which need to be answered with equally strong HPS. Anyway guys, that about wraps it up for this one. Let us know your predictions for the Solo Shuffle meta in the comments below. And while you're at it, consider subscribing with notifications turned on. We will be churning out content for Dragonflight all expansion. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.